Welcome back to Sailing Sea Dream Clyde. In this episode, we have a look around San Luis and La Vila Beach, then head off into the night to sail past the often feared Point Conception and into Southern California. After a great night sail, we recruit at Coho Anchorage before continuing east down Santa Barbara Channel. En route, we encounter copious amounts of oil on the water's surface. Once in Santa Barbara Harbor, we check out town and I pick up my newly beloved inflatable stand-up paddleboard. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the episode. After a rolly time anchored in San Luis, we headed to shore with hopes of going for a hike to the Point San Luis Lighthouse. Unfortunately, due to the security perimeter surrounding the nearby Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant, one can only access this trail during scheduled guided hikes on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Once we discovered this, we felt pretty let down, but decided to walk to the little touristy town called Avalia Beach. While nice enough, we didn't get much out of this place. It was very much catering to the Los Angeles tourist scene with nothing to offer other than expensive restaurants, cafes, bars, and a small grocery store of sorts with a meager supply of very expensive groceries. I really like this place. Yeah. That's so. Yeah, Valley Beach doesn't have too much to offer for cruiser folk. Tricky dinghy landing here at the beach and over at the pier as well. And basically nowhere to provision unless you take a Lyft or Uber. Between the lack of resources for cruisers, sketchy dinghy tie-up at the port, or challenging surf landing on the beach, and a pretty rolly anchorage, San Luis is a stop that we'd skip over next time in favor of spending more time in Morro Bay. That said, it did knock 20 miles off the long run south past Point Conception, and there is free access to drinking water at the pier in the harbor. We are going sailing! We're going to sail through the night and end up around dawn, just past Point Conception at Kojo Anchorage. Yeah, we're picking to go through the night because that is when the wind looks the best. So it looks really nice and moderate out there right now. I think we're just going to be cruising along. If we cruise at four knots the whole night average, then we're going to arrive right at, dusk, or right at dawn. So that's what we're hoping for. So off we go. Here. Gotta love that Maxwell HRC 10, I think it's called. Uh, windless, where you can transfer simply from road to chain without doing anything, just like that. The wind is still hesitating to fill up here for us, hoping it's gonna happen before sunset. It's starting to show up now, so we got the Genoa out at least, cruising along with good, uh, good pace under power, so we're making some miles anyways, and hopefully uh, turn this engine off and just get the hydrobain going and relax. Oh. Well, we turned the engine off because don't want to motor all night. Going two knots right now. If we're in the Strait of Georgia or the Gulf Islands, something with this nice little Mm, seven knot breeze or something. We'd be zipping along, but of course the swell out here in the Pacific coast of California keeps you wallowing a bit. But we'll put up with it for some time here. There seems to often be, like in British Columbia, a, a lull around sunset and then it kicks on up. So. A little roly poly out here, but the wind is starting to come up now just as the sun's setting and the moon is up, so it's kind of neat that the sun's fading away, but the moon's gonna keep giving us some nice light for the next, well, for most of the night here. It will set before, before dawn, but it should be a nice bright night tonight. With the sun now well down, the wind is picking up. We're making four knots as we settle into what will be a pretty bright night with the moon up and a nice clear sky. I feel that sailing under the moon is one of the most beautiful experiences one can have. The way the moon reflects off the ocean swell as it rolls by leaves me happily staring for hours. Everything is so much easier when the moon is out. No need for a headlamp, no straining your eyes to make out objects up ahead, and no waves sneaking up unnoticed. Some guidebooks describe Point Conception as the Cape Horn of the Pacific, and while we certainly believe it can be a rough place with the difference in weather conditions to the north and south no doubt creating a lot of wind as the atmosphere continues its never-ending fight for equilibrium, 
we had a very easy time getting past this landmark and on into Southern California. Well, it's sunrise here in Kojo, Anchorage. We're heading to bed now. I pulled an all-nighter for mediocre wind, as it turned out. But that's how it goes, goes sometimes. Still sailed most of the way. We motored about uh, three hours, so 15 miles out of 55. So that's pretty good. But uh, looking forward to getting a good rest now as the sun rises here at the edge of Southern California. All right, we're at Kojo Anchorage after a nice sleep until one o'clock for me. You were up a little earlier, huh? Yeah, I got up at 11. Nice. And then I went back to sleep for another hour. Nice. Yeah, and it's just howling here. Um, we probably would have gone sailing if we'd woken up a little earlier, but it's almost 40 miles to Santa Barbara, so it didn't really feel like arriving in dark again, especially there where it's a bit busier, and I think the Anchorage is, uh, might be uh, full of a lot of boats, so not very fun in the dark. Nope. No, so it's a beautiful spot here to just relax and yeah, relax in the boat. What do you think about going to the beach? I think it's possible. I think going to the beach, we might get a little bit wet because there are some nice rollers, but mm -hmm. I think if we time it right, we might be able to do it. Yeah. There is a small craft advisory from mm -hmm. 2 p.m. till 9 p.m. tonight. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely in the small craft mode right now with the wind gusting 30 for sure. A bunch of birds uh, going crazy over here in the kelp bed. They seem to be working their way towards us so we might get some action here. That's oh sweet. and you saw dolphins. Yeah I saw dolphins this morning. Mm -hmm. Yep just cruising around saying hey. Yeah. And I feel pretty refreshed after that very long day or long night which was pleasant overall. I've almost already forgotten about the lulls that were maddening me um, but the moon and then the good sailing always makes me forget these kind of things. So, yeah. And the stars and bioluminescence. Yeah. Some shooting stars too. Yep. And a couple of dolphins. Yeah, it's real nice. Hello. Just doing some dishes here on Seadrum Clyde. It's as close as you're gonna get to seeing us make coffee though. It is a beautiful Friday here in Kojo Anchorage and we are gonna head off and go sailing in this beautiful breeze up Santa Barbara Channel to Santa Barbara. And I think we're both looking forward to it. I think Kat is. She's nodding behind the camera. Just a bit of swell coming in here. And the wind waves are almost non-existent because the wind's coming straight off the land. So, there you have it. Dishes are all done. <laughs> We're kind of sailing. Very mellow. We have had some fluky winds and are attempting to go dead down wind um, to where we can see some wind lines just a little bit further out from shore. Let's see if we make it. Yeah, the wind coming off the land here is making it very gusty and changeable. The angles are changing quite a bit, so there's been some good shots, and now this is our mellowest we've experienced. Um, since we got to this little area here, it's been very windy until now. It's pretty good a little bit further offshore. Motor fest! Yeah, you heard it. We're motoring. There's just not enough wind to sail and there's quite a lot of wind chop coming from out in the ocean right now that's keeping us from even attempting. It's definitely a bit of a different scene 
out in the open Pacific here, or the edge of the open Pacific, where there's swell and wind and waves all the time, so it's almost impossible to sail when there's under 10 knots of wind, pretty much. And that's just how it goes. We can't, we can't do the old drifting anchorage, as I call it, like we do in the Gulf Islands Inside Passage, where you just sit around and let the current push you around until the wind comes up. Here, you just get thrashed around, it'd be super uncomfortable, so. We are motoring along still. There is no wind anywhere. The forecast from NOAA for this area says 15 to 25 knots with gusts to 30. Horse shit! <laughs> it's kind of like the forecast up in Canada, I guess. Off we go into the calms. Do we see a wind line up ahead? I'm gonna try to go raft up with one of those guys. Yeah, that'd be great. These are oil slicks surrounding some of the drilling wells here off near Santa Barbara. Pretty disgusting. It's, you can smell it in the air really strong. And it's just everywhere. That's crazy that this is, seems to be the, the norm here, that there's just oil slicks all over the place. And like little chunks of oil too, like floating brown gobs. It's gross. Just saw a bunch of bubbles coming up, so I guess it's like old oil wells leaking uh, from down below here. I'll go look at the chart plot and confirm that. We later learned that there are many hundreds of abandoned oil wells along the Santa Barbara Channel. An old method to plug up spent wells was simply dropping rocks into them, which probably explains the continual leak into the environment. While efforts are underway to cap the leaking wells, there are also natural oil seeps, so some tar and oil will always be found in the waters in this region. We are still motoring, and hilariously, a little breeze. It'd be sailable, but it's right on the nose, and we're like four or five miles left to go, so we're not gonna start tacking at this hour. Forecast was just totally wrong. Kinda feels like we're back home. <laughs> so, what can you do? It's our one big motor day, I think. Let's see if we have any more of these, but I suspect not. This is, uh, that forecast showed 15 to 25 knots, and. Obviously, we got basically zero. So. Well, after a long day of motoring, we're approaching Santa Barbara at last. After, yeah, I guess seven hours or six hours of this. Lots of crab pots here approaching it. Happy we didn't sail in here last night. It's possible I would have. We would have been sailing right through here and having no idea there was just crab pots everywhere. Well, after that long day, we're here in Santa Barbara and we're just gonna jump right off the boat and go grab some dinner tonight. I don't feel like cooking. I don't think Kat does either. We don't have a whole lot left on the boat. It's been a little while since we've done any real shopping. So we're heading into town, probably gonna leave the camera behind for now. But yeah, that was a day. <laughs> I'm uh, as, as viewers of this channel will know, I'm not a big fan of motoring and I will go great lengths not to do it. But with that swell, it just makes it impossible to do much of anything. To sit there drifting around in that, you'd just be getting walloped around and it would be super uncomfortable. And in the end, we really needed to motor because there was no wind that ever did come up today. So what can you do? We're here now. Delicious breakfast. Little fruit, fruit bowl with papaya and guava, and maybe there are tangerines. They're delicious. A little lime juice, and then Trevor, for the first time I've ever seen, used the stove or used the oven stove, and made a frittata, which was also very good. And we're gonna clean up, go take showers, and then head on over to the Santa Barbara Farmers Market. I really like it here so far. Hmm. It's very expensive though to stay here. Mm -hmm. And to anchor out last night, our experience was less than ideal. Just getting roly poly, roly poly all night. So, I'm trying to make the most of it. Yeah. It's uh, 
buck 75 a foot for transients here and they could charge you ten dollars for the gate key which i guess you can scan you can like you don't necessarily need but then you can't access the bathrooms so we always paid our ten dollars for that and we're tying up for at least the night It's like a oh, it's hers, I think. Is it? I don't think it's supposed to be that way. It's probably why he's hanging out, being like this. So we're off the boat and going for a stroll. Cat is keen to get to the farmer's market, which closes in soon. So we're boogieing and walking fast on this beautiful Southern California day. Here's a funky no. flower that Kat says is called a... I said bird of paradise flower, but I think those are actually different things because I usually have multiple. Mm. Maybe a viewer can tell us what this beautiful, unique flower is. It looks like a bird. It's beautiful here. Look mm. at that red door. So we walked a whole bunch. And then I took the bus part way back and got our groceries. Ooh, and look at we're making some more groceries. Hmm. A little lemons or oranges or something. No, it's not ready yet. <laughs> Fun. What you got here? I got myself a sup today. Sweet. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's a cool inflatable one, so it gets real small and stows away on the boat, so it's not going to be hanging off the lifelines like you see on many boats, which I'm not keen of when you're sailing, lest a gale came up and you had a bloody stand-up paddleboard on the side of the boat. So, yeah, this thing looks really cool, it looks pretty sturdy, and it was half off. Oh god. <laughs> Mate, I don't want to go swimming in the marina, I don't want to go swimming in the marina. Does it feel unsteady to you? It feels pretty good. It feels a little bit sketchy. We're supping, yo. Supping. Well, that about wraps up this episode. In the next one coming up next week, we head out from Santa Barbara across the way to Santa Cruz Island. We enjoy the peaceful anchorage at Prisoner's Harbor while doing some hiking and shoreline exploring. Next, we sail to Malibu, then to Los Angeles, where we leave the boat during a quick trip back to the Pacific Northwest to take care of some things back home. Thanks so much for watching Sailing Sea Dream at Clyde. If you'd like to show some extra support for the channel, head on over to our Patreon page where you can sign up for as little as $2 a month to access additional Sailing Sea Dream at Clyde content while directly supporting the making of these videos. Bye for now!